Solving a 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube in under a second? That's a piece of cake. Solving a regular Rubik's Cube in under 5 seconds? Eh, not impressive enough. What if you really want to prove how big brain you are? What if you need everyone in your math class to know that you are the smartest one there? In order to do that, we need to pull out the big guns. We're done with the small stuff. Today, we're going to go over how to solve a 4x4 four four Rubik's Cube in under 30 seconds. Woo! This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Make sure to watch to the end of the video so you can hear about the amazing deal they're offering. Step 1. Get a 4x4 four four speed cube. Unless you've got a really good hobby store in your area, you've probably never even seen a 4x4 four four for sale in a store. Even then, the 4x4 that those stores sell are just the crappy Rubik's brand 4x4s, and there's no way you'll get a sub-30 on one of those. So what you need to do is hop online, head over to thecubicle.com, and check out the 4x4s that they have for sale there. Budget 4x4s aren't quite as serviceable as budget 2x2s or 3x3s, but if you can only get a budget cube, it'll be good enough. The Yushin Little Magic 4x4 is a great starting option that only costs 13 bucks. And if you're willing to go a bit more high-end, my absolute favorite 4x4 is the Moyu Aosu GTS-2M, especially with any of the premium setup options that the cubicle offers. I'll have both of those cubes and maybe a few others linked in the description. No matter which 4x4 you end up getting, make sure that you use the discount code BRODYTHECUBER when you check out so that you'll get 5% off your order. Step 2 is to learn how to solve your 4x4. Solving a 4x4 Rubik's Cube is somewhat similar to solving a regular Rubik's Cube, just with a few more steps. So knowing how to solve a 3x3 will be a prerequisite for this step. The easiest 4x4 solving method to learn is called the reduction method, and you'll see why it's called that in a minute. The first step is to match up the four center pieces of each color so that each side only has one color of centerpiece. One thing that makes this step tricky is that you need to make sure to build these centers in the same places where they were on the solved cube. The next step is called edge pairing. Each edge on a 4x4 has two colors. For example, this edge has green and orange. For any two edge colors, there are exactly two edge pieces that have those colors, and in this step we need to match them together. So here's the other green and orange edge, and I'm going to connect them like this. I need to do that for all 12 color combinations on the cube. Once you're done with that, your cube will look like this. Because you have solved all of the center pieces so that they match, and brought together the edge pieces so they match, you have effectively turned this 4x4 Rubik's Cube into a scrambled 3x3 Rubik's Cube. That's why it's called the reduction method. You're reducing the puzzle from a 4x4 to a 3x3. All you have to do from there is solve it like a regular cube, and you're done. I learned to solve a 4x4 from Dan Brown's tutorial, but for the sake of completeness I will link a few different reduction method tutorials in the description below. Step 3. Get good at turning. Just like with any Rubik's Cube, the only way to get in all of the moves that you need to solve a 4x4 within 30 seconds is to be able to turn really fast, and to do that you will need to use finger tricks. Finger tricks are the techniques that let you turn a side of the cube with just one finger instead of your whole hand. And if you can do that for every turn you do, it lets you turn super fast. 4x4 finger tricks are a bit simpler than 3x3 finger tricks, with a couple exceptions that I'll go over in just a second. For the most part, all you'll need to be able to do are left and right turns with your left and right hands, top layer turns with each of your index and middle fingers, front layer turns using your index fingers and your right thumb, and bottom layer turns usually using your ring fingers. Finger tricks aren't something that can be taught to you as much as they are something that you just have to try to do. So the sooner you try to switch to turning like this, the faster you will start to develop the ability to turn like this. The only area where 4x4 turning is more complex than for 3x3 is when it comes to layer control. Because of the extra layer on 4x4, you will very often have to turn two layers at the same time with your finger tricks, and sometimes you'll have to quickly switch between turning two layers of a side and turning just one layer of that same side. This will take a lot of practice, but after all, if you aren't willing to practice, then cubing isn't the hobby for you. Step 4 is super important, and it's to learn the Yao method. Yao is the method that all of the top 4x4 solvers use, and you'll see why when we go over the steps. First, you build two centers, the one that you will solve cross on during the 3x3 stage, and the one that goes directly across from it. 
Then you turn the cube on its side and build three of the edges on your cross color. This serves two purposes, which we'll get to soon. Once you have those edges done, you need to build your last four centers, being careful to only use the one empty slot where you don't have a cross edge so that you don't mess up anything you've built. Once that's done, you can flip the cube back over, build the last cross edge, and put it where it belongs in the bottom layer. Just like with the reduction method, we are now at the edge pairing stage, and this is where the Yao method saves a ton of time. Because you've already solved four edges and they're all on the bottom, you will never need to flip over the cube to look for edges. This lets you turn faster, find pieces more quickly, and pause less, all of which are huge time savers. In addition, it lets you use a technique called 3-2-3 edge pairing, which lets you solve two or even three edges at the same time. When you combine all of these time saving techniques, it's easy to see how top solvers can pair all of their edges in just a few seconds. Once you're done with that, you get to the 3x3 stage, which is the second big time save for Yao. You start your 3x3 stage with your cross solved. From there, you do 3x3 stage just like in the reduction method, but hopefully with a much faster time. The Yao method will take practice to be able to do quickly, but once you put in all of that practice, you'll be so much faster than you were before. I'll include some Yao method tutorials in the description as well, along with the video by Cubix that I used to learn how to do 3-2-3 edge pairing. The next step is to learn as many tricks as possible to make your solves better and easier. Because there are so many steps to 4x4 solves, there are a lot of places where small tricks can be super helpful. Here are some of my favorites. If you're careful about how you plan it, you can often use single moves to pair together multiple lines of pieces when you're building your first two centers. This can save you a few moves, and therefore save some time. Another concept that's super helpful is knowing where to turn slow and where to turn fast. For example, building your first three edges is very hard and benefits a lot from efficiency. Therefore, it's better to turn slowly so you can look ahead as much as possible. On the other hand, looking ahead during 3-2-3 edge pairing is easy, so you should turn as fast as you can while you're doing that. And last but not least, there are a lot of tricky cases that can come up during edge pairing and some of them are best to learn on a case-by-case -case basis. Rather than taking credit for these tricks, I'll link you to the place where I learned them, Felix Zemdeg's Big Cubes 10 Tricks in 10 Days playlist. His 4x4 videos in that series are going to be super helpful for you. We're getting closer to the end, but we still have two crucial steps to go over, the first of which is to get a lucky start to your solve. Why not your whole solve? You'll see in a minute. When you're going for a sub 30 for the first time, you will need to get very lucky in order for it to actually happen. Everything needs to be in just the right place for you to go as fast as you possibly can. On my 2902 solve, that's exactly what happened. When it comes to my first three cross edges and my last four centers, everything lined up perfectly, which let me finish my centers at 12.2 seconds. That's several seconds faster than usual for me. My last cross edge could have been better, but my edge pairing went relatively smoothly. Nothing incredibly lucky there, but nothing went wrong, which is equally important. Because of that, I was onto my 3x3 stage at 22.7 seconds. The crazy thing is even that level of a beginning usually wouldn't be enough. I'd still need a 7.3 second 3x3 stage or better for sub 30, which is easier said than done. The only reason I clutched out the 2902 is because I got an exceptionally good ending to the solve as well. That leads us to the final step. Hope that you don't get parity. Parity is the final middle finger that 4x4 throws at you any time that you're trying to solve quickly. Parity refers to one of two situations that can appear on the 3x3 stage of 4x4 that cannot appear on a 3x3, and both take an extra algorithm to solve. The flipped edge, also known as OLL parity, is awful, and doing the algorithm to fix it will take most people at least three seconds. The two swapped edges, or PLL parity, aren't as bad to fix most of the time, but you're still going to lose at least a second or two whenever it comes up. Because each of those parity cases has 50-50 odds of appearing, you will only get a solve without any parity on one out of four solves, and unless you get a freakishly lucky start, you are going to need to not get parity for your first sub-30. Unfortunately, many of your first solves that will be on pace for sub-30 will fail due to you getting parity. I had my fair share of fails that happened this way while I was going for the solve for this video. So if you want to solve a 4x4 Rubik's Cube in under 30 seconds, that's how you do it. 
Get a speed 4x4, learn how to solve it, develop the necessary techniques to turn quickly, learn the Yao method, pick up as many useful tricks as you can, get supremely lucky, and keep your fingers crossed that parody doesn't rear its ugly head. It's not easy, but your peers will worship you if you can pull it off. So all of those who dare to try to do this, I wish you good luck. But for those of you who think that's too daunting, I still have a great way for you to learn something new. Skillshare isn't just a website with a bunch of courses on it. It's a community that's tied together by the shared love for learning. Those are my words, not theirs. Whether you have a skill that you want to refine, or you just want to learn something brand new, Skillshare is a fantastic place to do that. Whether you like coding, art, or juggling, Skillshare has tons of courses that all do a great job of taking what seem like really daunting tasks and breaking them down into smaller, more doable pieces. Each course also has places to discuss what you're learning with other people taking the same course, and even places to upload your own projects to show off what you've learned. When I first went onto the Skillshare website, the first thing that caught my eye was a course called Storytelling Through Film. How to Create Engaging Videos for YouTube by Thomas Daher. The course was so well done and captivating that I watched all 11 parts all at once and I feel like I learned a lot from it. As someone who makes a lot of videos, sometimes it can seem random which videos take off and which ones don't. But Thomas does a great job of breaking down the art of video making to a science in a way that makes the magic of a really captivating video feel possible to replicate. I can't wait to apply what I learned. As another plus, Skillshare has no ads and they're adding brand new premium courses all the time. That's so much value for less than $10 a month. But it gets even better than that. The first thousand subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership. Talk about a great way to learn something new this year. This is an amazing opportunity, so please don't let it pass by. Check out Skillshare using the link in the description and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you for watching the whole thing. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel so you'll see all the awesome stuff that I have coming soon. I'll see you guys later and I hope you have a great day. This is Brody, signing out.